What we have here today is a Hayward uh, H-Series H200 pool heater that is not working. And we'll go through some diagnostics and uh, get her fired up. We'll go ahead and remove this uh, bottom panel here. It's just two screws and they're captive so they don't come out and we'll remove that. I take and try to zoom the camera in. You have to look in this little window right here to see if the pilot light is on. And I'll try to get in there. It might not focus very well. And uh, if you get real close to it, you can see there is a tiny blue flame in there. And uh, so what we're going to do next is uh, check for voltage on here because once it uh, is burning it has to put out a small amount of electrical current to make this unit work. Okay what I have here is a multimeter and we want to go to the lowest uh, volt setting here for direct current so it would be DC volts my lowest reading is 2 and uh, what we're looking for is uh, 500 milliamps or above, which would be uh, 0.5. And what we want to do is put our meter on the two leads on the left here. There seems to be a little corrosion on there. So I'll clean these terminals up and then take another reading. So there's a couple methods of uh, cleaning these terminals up. One would be to use uh, this wet dry sandpaper. It's uh, 800 grit. You don't want anything really super aggressive that will uh, mar all that up. You just want to take the surface corrosion off of it. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, use a uh, Dremel tool with a little tiny wire wheel on here and it'll just clean those up and that's what I'm going to do next. Okay, I reconnected the uh, two things there. And we'll go and see if that uh, fires it up. Well, typically that uh, does it on these units here, so we'll go through with some more diagnostics. Uh, we have the pump turned on, but it's not firing. So next we'll take and uh, remove the two screws on the top here. This will uh, drop down. What I'm going to look at next is I'm going to check continuity on the switch here and then continuity over here on the pressure switch. It may be that the pressure switch is not being activated which would not allow the, uh, the uh, burner to kick on. And then on the very bottom down here I'm going to check continuity on these two uh, safety devices here. They go, uh, if it gets too hot, it br it's a thermal break and it's uh, self-resetting. And there's uh, occasions where they stick in the open position. So both of those have to have uh, continuity running through it before this uh, gas valve here will open up with the uh, one half bolt. Okay, on the back of the uh, on and off switch, I uh, disconnected that. I'm going to turn my uh, multimeter here to a continuity testing. And uh, there is continuity through there, so that switch is good. 
Next what we have is this uh, pressure switch here. And what happens is if the pump is not running, uh, you're not allowed to run the uh, heater. And what I'm going to do is to check to see if that is our problem. Just going to put a little jumper wire between these two. Okay, I got a little wire here and I'm jumpering this out for the uh, pressure switch and uh, that's not working. So uh, next we'll go ahead and uh, check those uh, thermal buttons. Okay, uh, upon uh, cleaning all the terminals and uh, testing uh, all those uh, thermal buttons, this bottom thermal button here is uh, what was broken. I simply just jumpered it out to uh, make sure that uh, that was the right part and it fired right up. What you need to do is uh, to order that, you're going to need to have your model number there. And uh, that's on that decal that's down here. And uh, hope you found this helpful.